I know I've done this before on the channel, but I want to redo this Russia campaign, how to really start it off the right way, because I've reworked it, and I've, I think I've come up with a pretty damn good way to start out, and I think you guys might enjoy it, so let's dive into it. Alright, first thing is, don't listen to things she says, because we need to talk about some different things because there's going to be some unique things that we can do here now obviously there's going to be some first steps that we're going to want to get done first thing we're going to slap our gentleman in here and we're going to start working on empiricism i'll come back to that in a second we're going to go ahead and we're going to move our spy and we're going to start moving him down towards georgia all right, just a quick interjection from editing, Dave, and I forgot to uh, change my ministers, so you'll see me come to that around the second or third turn when I finally use my brain and remember that. But do that in the first turn for you. Don't be me. We're going to take our priest wherever he went, right here, and we are going to start moving him to the south. Let's see. Take him to the south. Next thing we're going to take a look at, we got 6000 to spend. We're going to need to spend this money super efficiently because we don't necessarily have a great economy starting out. So we're going to spend it on the buildings that are going to make us the most bang for our buck in the quickest amount of time. And that's going to be the government palace, even though it takes five turns. Super important for us to get. And also conservatorium. And then we're going to, over here, we're going to go to the governor's mansion with a second phase. And then we're not going to have the money left to spend on this. And we're not going to have the money left to spend on anything else. But that's fine. That gets us started. Now let's go into the next discussion. All right, so let's take a look at who we're bordered and why it's going to matter. Uh, because this is going to have some really important impacts on us immediately, especially since we are bordered with um, Ottomans, um, not directly, but through their ally, which is Crimea. They can transfer troops through their allies region and hit us there. So we're basically bordered by um, the Ottomans, who we are at war with, and Crimea, who is Ottomans uh, uh, protectorate. So that's going to be an immediate threat on our southern border. Now, we're also going to be bordered with Georgia and Dagestan. Now, these might not be immediate threats, but they're going to be near future immediate threats. So we're going to need to pay attention to them and what we're going to have to do with them. Now, in the north, we're going to be bordered with Sweden. And this is going to be important because they have... Obviously, a nice little region here in Ingria and St. Petersburg, and they're going to be able to recruit men from here. Now, they don't start off with a vast amount of men, but they do start off with more than us because they do have men here in Estonia, and they can combine these forces up and uh, quickly build up a nice army if you don't handle this threat relatively quickly it doesn't have to be immediate but it does need to be in your near future that you're going to need to deal with them and they're going to have again recruiting spots that are going to be impactful for you in um ingria um right here and in estonia and also finland these three capitals can produce troops although only two at a time at this point they can still build up a lot of forces pretty rapidly when you're stuck with being pretty damn poor and only having the ability to recruit two in uh, Russia and then one here in both of these regions in the north. But they're pretty spread out, so it's going to take you a lot of time to consolidate your forces. Now, you do have a nice recruitment spot from Ukraine, but you're going to need that recruitment to deal with your southern crises that you're going to be dealing with. So, 
We're gonna we're gonna break this down so it, you can focus on one spot at a time. Let's take a look at our military force. Obviously, we don't really have much to go on with the size of our armies. It's pretty bleak. All right, so let's take a look at our military force. All right, so obviously we don't have much. In Ukraine, we got three units here, and we got six units, and that's going to actually take up the bulk of our forces here. Now, we also have two units here and five units here. So that's going to be basically our northern army we're going to be starting with, and that's not a whole lot, guys. So you start off with... 6,000 and you have to directly spend that on building up your economy and then you're only making 4,322 on your next turn which isn't great um, considering all the things that you have to build up because all your buildings are pretty pretty much at their bottom level I mean you don't even have some of these farms ready to go and it's important to get those going as soon as possible because you're going to need this growth to get all these towns build up because especially in um, Muscovy you have tons and tons of towns that are going to emerge and this region will grow to be extremely wealthy in the long term so that's what you need to really focus on um, getting ready to do what you need to do all right, so us discussing the military, my suggestion would be to consolidate your forces in the north. We're going to pull these guys back to Muscovy, get them together, and what we're going to do is we're going to make a direct assault onto uh, Crimea. So we're going to gather our forces in the south and combine them together, and we're going to go straight after uh, Crimea. All right, now we're also going to have a spy over here. In uh, Poland, Lithuania's regions, we're going to take down here from Minsk area and uh, over in Belsaris. And we're going to come down here and we're going to see if we can uh, do some damage here against the Ottomans. We're going to see if we can assassinate this little bugger. And that's where we stand with that. All right. So here we go. Let's go into diplomacy. And let's take a look at what we can do now couple things that I'm going to suggest to you that you're going to want to take care of. You are allied with Denmark and you're allied with Poland-Lithuania. Now, this alliances between these two nations are going to bring you into conflict with, number one, immediately Sweden. Because Sweden's going to declare war on Denmark turn one. So this is going to be a... Um, Alliance that's going to pull you into war with Sweden right off the bat after the first intern So that's not something you want to get involved with directly. So what we're going to do is we're going to cancel this alliance and They're going to betray you anyways Denmark will um, I'll just tell you from experience as you start taking over um, Regions from Sweden and then you finally do take Stockholm uh Norway will betray you, and I'm, or I'm sorry, not Nor Norway, but Denmark will actually betray you and declare war on you. So screw them. We'll just jump the uh, gun and uh, give them the middle finger right off the bat. Okay, so now as far as other diplomacy, there's not really a whole lot you can do. Um, you do have the ability to request trade from um, Dagestan, but that's not going to happen. They're not going to do it. And you can also request trade from Georgia. But neither one of these guys are going to work with you. Because they hate your guts. And once again, they will be declaring war on you in the very near future. Okay, another note from Editing Dave. There is still that part I forgot to do about uh, changing my ministers. Pretty important. It could have actually got me more money. Don't forget. Alright, so there's a couple things we're going to want to do. As far as the structures that we have built, this building right here, we're not going to need it. We're going to get rid of it. Our people are probably going to get pissed off, but we're going to be recruiting troops here. So that will help get public order in line anyway. So we're going to get rid of that building. All right, the next thing we're going to do is going to be controversial. We're going to lower our taxes on our lower classes to the second to lowest level. 
Now that's going to drop us. Now you can see what it's going to drop us. Now some people are going to argue that you shouldn't do this because you need all the money you can get short term. But you can see this is only going to take 300 from you. And the benefits, let's see. And I'll show you what the benefits are going to be. Right now, your next turn is going to be 24 turns before it's ready to go. All right. So now let's look at this. We drop down our tax on our lower classes. That makes them happier. Now we're going to have this building in 10 turns. All right. So that's the importance of it. It's going to get us that building in, in 14 turns earlier than it would have been. It's going to come right here. And it's going to be an important building for us for what we're going to have plans for it. We're actually going to use it to build another uh, college. And it's going to be vital to our research efforts. We're going to have all of our research efforts centralized here in Muscovy. All right, so that gives us everything we need done on our first turn. So we're going to go ahead and end it and see what transpires. All right, so with Sweden wanting to do that in a trade, we're going to actually up their um, what we want from them. So they'll decline the trade and not declare war on us if we refuse it. Because if we do refuse it, they will declare war on us. You can see here more troops that they're going to eventually bring down here and solidify their northern army. Or they might take it up to um, Sweden itself. So we'll have to see how that plays out. All right, we do have a gentleman that we got, which is not likely usually in most of your games you're going to play. So this is a lucky thing. So we're going to start transferring him. Now there's some things that we're going to want to do right off the bat. We This building we destroyed, we're going to build a school there. And that leaves us 2,700. We actually get 5,300 next turn, which is outstanding. We're going to combine these armies together. And now we still have money we're going to spend and we're going to need to start building up some troops. Otherwise, we're going to have people declaring war on us and we're going to build up the cheap troops right now. These only cost us 130 per turn versus our infantry are going to be double the price. So these are your half off discount troops. Now, they're only melee and they're not great in morale. They're actually horrid in morale. So you're going to need to team them with. Um, a general all right that's our dude we recruited all right so now that we're in the second term uh, turn now that we're in the second turn I'm gonna want to take a look at all my regions we still have a thousand to spend but I want to discuss with you guys what your regions are and what they're gonna mean to you in the early game most of these regions, if we take a look at our list, we can see our income. The vast majority, actually more than double what you make, comes strictly from Muscovy. Now, this is your taxes, not what your actual income is. But this is the wealth that you have that you tax at 28.7 right now percent for us. Okay. So as you build your buildings, you'll get more tax percent out of them. And in Ukraine is our next best, and Karelia is our after that. And so our all of our northern regions right here are our best economic regions. Ukraine, which is second. Muscovy is first. Um, Karelia is third. And this one is fourth. Don't get me trying to say that or pronounce it. It's just not going to happen. All right, so we also have a decent one here in Tartaria. Uh, but you can see here we make zero out of Comey, which is right here. So we're not even going to mess with that region. We barely make anything out of Don Viasco, which is right here. Um, this region we barely make anything out of, although it's a little bit better. And, of course, this one all the way over here in the corner is pretty worthless as well. Um, now, this doesn't mean they won't become something long. I mean, later in the game. Because they actually will. But we're going to want to build up, once again, in our capital first. It's vital to us because all the money has to go from one region to our capital before we make money off of it. So we're going to 
want to make sure all of our buildings here are as secure as possible. Now, Sweden's got a spy up here, and they will destroy your building up here. Um, rather than keep fixing it, let's just deal with it as it happens, and uh, that will be one building we'll be suffering loss from. Now, as we uh, go through this, you're going to see our public order is going to be in crisis because we are building a second college. Uh, but, once again, we are going to be keeping a fairly good, strong military here in Muscovy until we have taken over St. Petersburg and uh, Estonia. So that's kind of the battle plan. Now, I have a specific plan of how we're going to deal with our two southern uh, soon-to-be enemies. And we'll discuss that as it happens. But with this last thousand, what we're going to do is we're going to spend that on our farms. So we can get our population growth. You, this one's going to build immediately. So we're going to see that our nine turns is going to jump up quite a bit. Because this is going to improve our population growth in the region. Which is going to be outstanding for us. And I'm doing this one in Tartaria. Uh, because again, this is one of our mid-tier regions and all the other ones we don't have farms that we can build up that fast because uh, our farms in Ukraine are already built um, now we do have farms here that we can spend money on to get built but we're actually going to hold off on those because they're pretty porous regions right now and we're going to save that 413 so that we can get some more money towards our troops on the next turn as we're making 5,000 next turn but we have things we're going to need to be prepared to spend on. This will be finished next turn. And we're going to need to start spending towards that. Alright, so it's time to bring the heat on Ukraine. So we're going to get after them. We're going to combine these two armies up. And we're going to bring the heat. Now we're in a pretty good situation. Um, they might have an army out here somewhere lingering. They should because they usually have... A Cossack and something else but what we're gonna do is we're gonna hold here laying siege to this region and there we are now since we still have that 400 I'm actually gonna go ahead and spend it I lied and what we're gonna do is we're gonna spend it on Ufa so we're gonna spend that 300 there all right so we've done all we need to do on this turn there's a specific reason why we're laying siege to um, Crimea rather than just taking it over right now and we'll get into that after the intern Fuck All right, so editing Dave here. I'm just gonna kind of explain what's going on. I I actually realized that um, I've forgot to change my ministers at this point so I'm actually going back to the autosave and uh, trying to decide whether I want to start the campaign over again or um, do that because I, I wanted this to be the best uh, tutorial uh, possible uh, for anybody that's starting a campaign so that's why I'm kind of going through the dilemma I'm going to edit this down uh, and hopefully this makes more sense as we go along. All right, I'm actually going to edit over the audio on this part because I was kind of flustered from forgetting it uh, to do this. So I'm just changing out the ministers. I'm trying to look at what traits they have, who I can sort in to be the best possible fit uh, for my uh, cabinet positions. And um, obviously we, we're going to have uh, some cabinet members that... We're not going to want to keep long term, even from after these switches I do, uh, because uh, some of them have some negative traits that we're not going to want to keep, uh, such as uh, uh, negatives towards the treasury. And obviously you want somebody that's going to be positive towards your treasury cabinet um, so that you can make money, because treasury is probably your most important slot in this treasury cabinet, then followed by the army and the justice. And that's because those are going to directly uh, affect your campaign treasury for your money, ar army for your research and your money, uh, expenses on your armies, and justice for your public order. And Navy will come into play later 
uh, the head has little effect. All right, so I think this is about the best I can do with the man. I mean, with my uh, ministers, we've got uh, some pretty good stuff here. We are plus on our lower classes on a few of these guys, uh, even though we do have some negatives with a few of these guys. Overall, I think it balances out pretty well. This one does have, again, he does have some benefits, but also negatives as well as some of the others. But all in all, I think we've done pretty well. We'll look to get rid of this guy and see if we can improve on him. But in the meantime, it is going to help us with our economy a bit. So there's that. All right, let's end the turn. And we're going to see what happens with our siege here in Crimea. Now, once again, I accidentally forgot to mess with my cabinet. Uh, but that's something you should do on your first turn. All right, so our ally is attacked. And the aggressor is Prussia. We are actually going to honor this alliance and go to war with Prussia. We don't want to get negative favorability um, from declining an alliance. And Sweden is going to, again, try to get us to trade that with them. We're going to up it again. And they will refuse, obviously. Now, they are going to declare war on us. We are not going to call ally because we don't want to risk losing them yet. So we are now currently at war with Sweden, which was inevitable. All right, so the um, Crimeans are sallying forth, and we are going to fight this battle. Now, this is not necessarily going to be an easy battle uh, to win, but a lot of these troops are trash. Really, the two that we're going to have to worry about are going to be these two Cossacks and this um, Cossack Light Cav. That's going to be, and of course, the General. Those are going to be the ones that we have to worry about. If we can deal with them, we got the Generals, we got the Cav, so we should be okay. Other than that, let's get into it. This is not going to be an easy battle for a beginner, but um, just follow along and I can help you succeed at it all right so i probably didn't explain this uh, but the reason we had sieged crimea rather than attack them is because we want to make them a protectorate so that's the purpose of this fight so let's get into it and we're going to set our men up we got artillery in this which they do not so we're going to need to get a good line of sight where we can use our artillery so we're going to need to get ground level and you'll have to find a spot where you can place it where you can get some good decent shots off on them and maybe take out that um, Cossack Cav. Now we're going to want to keep the high ground and keep that momentum. We only have one unit that can shoot so that's something we need to keep in mind. We do have two generals. And these guys right here are absolute trash. They only have three morale. Um, and that's with having our two generals here to boost their morale. Uh, so we're going to want to keep our generals, or at least one of our generals, close to these three guys so they don't break. And this one also only has five morale, which is not bad for a militia unit. So let's get into it. Let's take off fire at will. We're going to see if we can get a shot in on their general right off. We get some of the Cossack and a few of the General's Bodyguard. And actually we get a couple of these guys as well. So he's out of range. So now we're going to see if we can target this Cossack and see if we can get him whittled down a little bit more. We'll speed this bad boy up. All right, we got him down to 30, which is pretty good. We got 15 of them down. We're also getting some clips on some of these guys. It's not bad. Good thing to remember here is a lot of these guys are melee troops for the um, Crimeans as well. So they're not going to be able to fire back. They do have the two Cossacks that can. 
that's where we're going to be worrying about quite a bit now our artillery is being blocked by this house so that's not helping us get any shots in on that so we're going to move in here and see if we can hit some of these guys and get some nice uh, inline shots against them I am going to bring my cav to bear on theirs if they bring it around as they start getting closer we're gonna have to get super aggressive and see if we can get a chain route grow going here hopefully we hit some of that general's bodyguard All right here he comes in with the Cossacks as he gets close we can hit him with the there we go Give him a little weeding down there. Now we got the downhill momentum. So we're going to take it to him. We're going to need to push through. They do have a general right there. So that is going to help him a bit. There we go. We're starting to chain. Let's get that cab pushed through. We can't lose him. We're going to want to take out as many of these guys as we can. Alright, things are going pretty well. You can see how hitting these low-end troops is pretty important. Now, I don't want to lose any of my generals, so we're going to pull them out. Uh, actually, we can use him to run down these guys. Let's get you over here. Hitting them. Let's get our cab back uphill. And where's our other one? All right, you are stuck for some reason. Let's get you out. We do have this Cossack and the general we're still going to have to deal with. Let's see if we can get these guys pushed through. And we can get another downhill charge on them. See if we can run down these guys. All right, they are breaking, sir. See if we can get this general. All right, they're pretty much had. We just got the general to kill. And we're going to need to run down as many of these, these troops as possible. Now this 56 here, I've been keeping an eye on. We're going to let them escape. We're going to allow them to live and escape off the battlefield. But I want to kill all the other troops. Unfortunately, this one is way over there. We're going to try and get to him. All right, he's done one more or two more and we can move off this. As long as we get them under 10, then we can leave them alone because they will not come back from that. All right, we're going to see if we can get you guys over here to help run these guys down. There's their general. We're going to want to get him out of here too. All those guys are taken care of. Let's get set up. Let's get you on the artillery. Maybe we can get some shots off on their general. All right, good. We're going to get to them, which is huge important. All right, he's going to get those. Let's get over here to the artillery. terrible shot see if we can hit the ground a little bit better actually we don't need the artillery now I don't want to lose any perfect
use our ragamuffin to kill their general and then we'll come in with the cav to kill the rest all right they're done this should be over all right actually wait a second because i don't want to kill now when you bring in your cab like this you will run down some of your own men so you got to be careful there all their general's bodyguard is dead so we're just going to see about running down them unfortunately some of them did get away but we did get them down pretty far no maybe we killed them all all right so once again what i did is i used the high ground here as they came up on me and I use this downhill momentum with my charge against their low tier units being backed up with my general. They did have their general backed up, but the shock of getting hit by all that melee at once and then my cav pushing through them gave them morale drops and allowed me to take the day. So we're just waiting to kill the rest of these guys. One more. All right, we can end the battle. Decisive victory, which is perfect. We want to make sure we get a decisive victory. Um, that way we can force them to become a protectorate. So they have 140 men left. We got 473. Looking good in the neighborhood. All right, Georgia has declared war on us. And we're not going to call our ally. So let's go ahead and prepare for that. I got a solution ready for them. Georgia will be soon to declare war on us as well. All right, so some buildings constructed. We got 5,700. And let's go ahead and go to diplomatic relations. We're going to go to uh, Crimea. We are going to request peace, become protector, and request a trade agreement. All right, they accept. And the reason they accepted is because they barely got any men left. So they know they have no shot. All right, so there we are. We now have Crimea as a protectorate, so that takes us now up to 6,500 in income. Huge difference. Why? Why did that change so much? It changed so much because now we have a new trade partner in Crimea, which we only had Poland, Lithuania. So now we have a new trade partner, which is going to give us 617 in tri trade, and now they're going to be a permanent trade partner as long as we keep them as a protectorate and not just that we gain half of their wealth so they are going to continually give us some of their money and you can see that on the national summary you start off with always getting three thousand so some of this is going to be put into a little bit extra now three three uh, hundred twelve is going to be income that we're getting from crimea as being a protectorate now we can also get other money in our other it's always going to be at least three thousand that's your like your ruler's purse but you gain more through having protectorates raiding trade routes uh um, things of that nature corruption all those things can affect it but um that's how you gain some of that money so we're looking pretty good here we're going to want to keep our army balanced Right now, it's low because we don't have a lot of troops, but we're going to get that army to be pretty close to the tax income, and at some point, it's actually going to be higher, um, unfortunately, but it's going to be part of the animal we're going to have to deal with as we progress forward as Russia. All right.